That's right, lads. We've got a lot of new leads. We've got to go and see the crazy Olivia and tell her that we we've got an idea on how to escape. See if that'll give her any peace of mind. And then we're gonna go and hunt for these tablets. There's four tablets that we need to get. Stone tablets. I've already got one, the Roman one. But I don't. I can't remember where I picked it up. I would have picked it up ages ago from somewhere when I was stealing everything. Um, and actually, there should be a tablet in one of the rooms in here. I imagine, but. I don't know which one. Melodies fetch a game with just as the oath. Yes, 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 you wench. I figured it out. I know where we are. We're in the underworld. Say it. Speak its name. The underworld. Then it is true. I was right. Yes. I thought I thought I saw it, but when the rest of them could not, I kept thinking I must have gone insane. I had to tell myself it was true over and over again until I wasn't sure if I was deceiving myself I must apologize if my words seem cryptic I would found comfort in reciting the metamorphoses by our great poet Ovid he gives such an uncanny description of this place I cannot help but wonder if he himself came here would you like to hear it I don't know if I be bothered Hey, go on then. I will do my best to remember. There is a downward path, gloomy with fatal yew trees. It leads through dumb silence to the infernal regions. The sluggish Styx exhales vapor, and by that way, the shadows of the newly dead descend, entombed with full rites, and the ghosts of those at last given proper burial. The wide, thorny waste is cold and pallid, and the newly arrived shades are ignorant of the road that leads to the Stygian city, where Black Dis has his cruel palace. As the ocean accepts the rivers of all the world, so this place accepts all the souls, and is never too small for any populace, nor notices the crowds that come. There the bloodless shadows wander without flesh or bone. Some crowd the forum, some the house of the ruler of the depths. Others follow their trades, imitating their previous lives. And still others incur punishment. I hope I have done it justice. Oh, that was and fantastic. And we share a secret. It's as if you've lifted a great burden from my shoulders. Thank you, friend. I think I should rest. Good. Right, that's done. That didn't really get us anything. We've also got to find someone called Kabash or something. And I've actually read about him in a on a tablet in one of these rooms. Now... That's Horatius's chest. Right, let's check these rooms for a tablet. We'll find Kabasha's room. Yeah, we know I've spoken to the priestess. Looking for a stone tablet. Found a dog. Oh, that's a lion. <laughs> it's not a dog. Well, this is Rufius's room, so it's not going to be in here. Oh, this is Galerius's room. He's 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 not going to be the guy. Whose room's this? Virgil. Demetrius. Aha! Hmm. Navia's chest. Key to the chest in the shrine of the Apollo. 
I see if she give me that. I didn't really. We could have just come in here and stole it. Awesome. Olivia. Money. That's all she's got. The creature's chest. Hmm. I don't know what tell you what. Tell me where this guy is, right? You. Kabash. I need to find Kabash's room. Oh, you're here. Blah blah blah. Um Not oh, interested. Yeah. Right. I'm looking for Kabash. Have you seen him? Not for a few weeks now. Last time I saw him, he was sitting at a table with Georgius, whispering about some job. I remember because they kept looking over their shoulders as if they didn't want anyone else to know. So, uh, naturally, I hovered. The one word I kept hearing was vanishing and then the next day kabash just disappeared coincidence i think not awesome right well i need to go and see georgius right. anyway because apparently he's got one of the stone tablets let's go let's do it But it doesn't look as if it's lying about anywhere. You look well, my sartorial friend. Hello again, my sartorial friend. Yes, yes, yes. Right, first off, I need to know where to find a Greek plaque. And in a city full of Romans, you are asking me, because I am Greek. Let me tell you something about Greeks and Romans. My name is Georgios, yes, but the Romans, they do not care. They hear me say Georgios, and they think, ah, he must mean Georgius. Good Roman name. They do this all the time. They see us worshipping Zeus, they copy us, but call him Jupiter. They take Hades and call him Pluto, Persephone, Proserpina. I am flattered that they copy our ideas, but why must they change the names? Do they want credit for making it all up? Do they want to forget where it came from? At first, I pull my hair out. After a while, I give up and I become Georgius the Roman. I accept the world is Roman. Plus, I have no hair left to pull. <laughs> but my point is this. If you want to know who stole an old Greek name, look no further than the sticky-fingered Romans. The plague you seek was pilfered from a collection of old Greek relics by none other than Dooley. Uh, he cannot help it. Like a typical Roman, he likes oh. things, especially those that once belonged to my people. And besides, it makes him happy. So I say, let him keep it. I believe he still has it with him, in his cell, just opposite the Temple of Demeter. That's where, wait there, that's the Greek plaque, but I got, did, did he not give me the Roman plaque? Okay, I'm looking for Kabash, and I heard you were one of the last people to see him. Ah, I knew this day would come. I do not wish to lie to you, my friend, but even discussing this matter is dangerous. Please, let us leave the live coals safely beneath the ash. You can trust me, we foreigners have to stick together, remember? Very well, but the Magistrate would not look kindly upon this, so please keep it to yourself. For several months now, I have been sneaking out at night to worship the gods of my ancestors in the Temple of Demeter. Each day, I leave offerings of food in the hope that we may have a bountiful harvest, and yet the next day when I return, the food is missing. 
Right, so how is that a problem? The offering it is symbolic, you see. It is never eaten. So I ask, who or what is devouring the food in this temple? Stranger still. Once I sat in front of my shop like the hundred eyed Argus until dawn to see if I could spot a thief going in. But do you know what I saw? I have no idea. Nothing. Nobody entered. And yet when I went to take a look, my offering was gone. It is bizarre, is it not? When I told my friend Kabash of this at the tavern, he offered to help investigate. He went in, and to my dismay, he was never seen again. Okay, I'm off at the Temple of Demeter then. Where is it? It is the only Greek temple in the city. Head towards the baths, and it is the last building on your right. Right, I'm going there then. I do not think you should pursue this, my friend. It would break my heart to be responsible for two people disappearing. But you do not strike me as a kind of person to be deterred by such warnings. So just be careful, I beg you. Okay then. Now wait there. This guy said there's something in his cell. Hello? Isn't the great temple majestic? Hello. Have we... We have, right with it, about that Greek plaque in your cell. You like it? It's shiny, innit? It? it makes me happy just I want it. it. I want it. Can I have it? But if I gave it to you, then I wouldn't have it anymore. And I'd be sad. Oh, shiny. I need it for something really important. But it's mine. And I really like it. I want to keep it. All right, so what's it going to take for you to give it to me? Um, well, if you get me out of here, then I wouldn't need it anymore because I'd Mid. already be happy. Then you could have it and you... Okay, there's no way Sentius will release you. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, we already know this. We already... Right. Wait there, so... How... But if I had... Mate, I must already have that Greek plaque. Would he even not have given it to me when I released him the first fucking time? I don't actually have it. Isn't that a kick to the fucking arsehole? That's fine. I know where it is. What? Hello. I didn't. I didn't actually click on you, mate. Springtime. I'll just fucking steal it through the bars. Right. We'll get that another time. That that's completely bullshit. So we have to run through the whole fucking election again right well tell you what why don't we go to the i'm gonna go and find this kabash guy quests um kabash this one this is where we're going anyway so, yeah, Temple of Demeter, let's go. Aha, see, we've never even been in here. A Greek statue, probably of the goddess of whom the temple is de dedicated. Perhaps a local Greek resident knows more about her. Oh, hello there. What is this? I can't even go down, I couldn't actually go down there, there's, there's an invisible wall. Why I mate, this is a fucking awesome place you got here. Ask the old man if he's seen Kabash. You carry the gift of Prometheus in your hand. Remarkable. Yes, I do. Welcome, welcome. 
May I ask your name? Bob. My name's Bob. It's a sincere pleasure to meet you. Tell me, what brings you all the way down here? I'm looking for Kabash. Ah, Kabash. I know this man. He came through here some weeks ago. I will tell you everything I know, but first, a request. I have been living down here alone for many years, with nobody to talk to but myself. The one thing I long for above all else before I die is a good philosophical argument with somebody astute. I'm hoping that person is you. It definitely Let is. Let us find out with this simple question. Have you deduced the name of the god responsible for the Golden Rule? Pluto. Excellent. I see you are indeed quite astute. Very few come to that realization before their time in the sun is over. Now, will you join me in a friendly Socratic dialogue? Certainly. Wonderful. Then let me begin with a question. Would you say you know the difference between right and wrong? The spelling. Yes. And to what extent? In every situation? In more situations. So, you're not entirely confident. That is quite sensible. Indeed, I'm reminded of something Socrates once said. To paraphrase, better to know that you know nothing than to know nothing and think that you know. It is because knowledgeable people have learned enough to know they know very little in the broad scheme of things. You see, out there in the world, being uncertain about right and wrong was acceptable because our mistakes rarely had consequences. So we would tell lies and bend rules and turn a blind eye and rationalize, and yet still find a way to think of ourselves as good people. But under the golden rule, morality matters. The slightest wrongdoing could result in a mass execution. So to navigate this maze, we would have to be certain about the difference between right and wrong. Wouldn't you agree? I would. So let me ask you this. Is there one system of morality which is always perfectly correct? Which you could follow in every situation and always do the right thing? No. No, I don't think so. Are you sure? Or is it possible that humans simply haven't figured out the right system yet. I think there's no such thing as correct morality. So is it up to each of us to decide what right and wrong mean to us individually? Or must we simply follow the laws and customs of whichever community we're in? I think we need to decide for ourselves. So if a man feels that stoning to death his unfaithful wife is right, then is it right? Hmm. No. I agree. But why? Didn't you just say right and wrong depends on the... Yes, individual? but it does. No. It does, though. Because it's right or it's correct to him, but it doesn't mean it's correct to me. And that's why it's on the individual. If he feels it's right to kill his wife, then he's confused or sick. <laughs> I see. So you get to decide right from wrong. The people who see things differently are not allowed. What makes you special? I, I, I don't like how I'm fucking box section in these standard answers. Empathy is the cornerstone of human morality. Empathy? The emotion? Let me ask you this. Imagine you were forced to choose between the death of your beloved spouse and the death of two innocent strangers. Knowing there will be no legal consequences, who would you mark for death? Two strangers. Of course. Everyone would. Our empathy, like a siren song calling us away from our true path, would lure us toward the greater evil. Can such a beguiling thing be a reliable cornerstone for anything, let alone the perfect moral code? No, but that's what I'm saying, mate. There's no perfect moral code because morals are fucking subjective. 
You know what I mean? I suppose not. What's your point? My point is this. I don't think anyone alive truly knows any hard and fast rules about right and wrong. Well, that's what I've just fucking said, you nonce. Mate, can we all agree on one thing? That you're a dog nonce. Guaranteed. Fair point. Let's just, let's just entertain this guy. I can't be asked him anymore. If there is one thing I have observed about rules, it is that virtuous people do not need them. And evil people will always find a way around them. And so we must accept our limitations and the sad truth that no human society will ever achieve the utopia for which it strives. In mathematics, we would call it an asymptote, a line that can be approached but never reached. Because the only way to create a utopia is with the ever-present threat of force, such as the golden rule. This and no other is the root from which a tyrant springs when he first appears as a protector. And life under tyranny is no utopia at all. I agree. I'm glad to hear that. In any case, thank you for humoring an old man. I would be happy to answer your questions. Right. Where can I find Kabash? I will tell you, but you may find him hostile. To prepare for your encounter, there are certain things you must know. Very few know this, but before the Romans came to this city, it was once entirely Greek. The architecture, the temples, and the people. When the Romans came, in typical fashion, they claimed it as their own, built over everything that could be built over, and renamed the things that could not. Thus, the shrine of Persephone became the shrine of Proserpina. And when they found an obelisk bearing the name Hades, they tore it off and replaced it with Pluto instead. And the city's dwindling Greek residents, witnessing this compulsive Roman conquest, decided to preserve what they could of their heritage. They gathered their art and valuables, secreted them away through the Temple of Demeter, and hid them here, out of reach of the Romans. Okay. I'm with you. However, there was one thing that always seemed out of place to me, and it is the very thing you seek. An even older plaque bearing an Egyptian inscription. How did it get here? Well, actually, where, what did it say? We had no idea until years later, when the first of my friends began to die. As a result of their deaths, we began to dig catacombs branching off from this cavern to lay them to rest. We extended the tunnel so far that we accidentally discovered another, an even older tunnel, which somebody had gone to great lengths to keep hidden. Suddenly it made sense why there was an out-of-place Egyptian plaque among our people's possessions. You see, we proud Greeks had thought the Romans beasts for stealing and corrupting our heritage. But it turns out this game has been going on much longer than any of us imagined. I think it is best you head through the catacombs and follow Kabash's trail. Okay. What's in there? There are certain things you must see for yourself. Take this key. You'll need it to open the gate. Awesome. A rusty old key to the catacombs. Now, um... Oh, that's it. So I can't ask I him about the... Chat. All right, I can't ask him about the the plaque. Probably gonna be in the catacombs, so we're there. Catacombs is probably dark. You know what it is? Every time we get the golden bow out, look, it like lights the way. I might just keep the golden bow out. Is this the catacombs? Oh wait, there. What quest is this? Oh, the catacombs are that way. Ah, you've returned. Ah, yes. Right, let's save this. There's probably going to be some deadly traps. You think?
looks like a um, Skyrim. Sorry, Oblivion when you start up in the tunnels. Locked from the other side. Is that a rat? What the f- oh. What? What? <laughs> Lads, what the fuck just happened there? <laughs> I just... I I'm dead. Apparently I fell through eternity. And some woman started speaking to us. Fucking weird. Um. Continue then. What the hell? Bruh. Fucking glad I saved it there. Fell through the floor. Fantastic. Fantitastic. Oh, so I've got hideous golden statues. The, the worst part of the game by far, aside from not being able to trigger the election properly, was getting chased by these golden things. Egyptian statue. Oh, maybe that thing is Kabash. See ya. Bitch, I'm gone. Legging it as fast as I can. Stop. Do not come any closer. Who are you? I'm a, your brother from another mother. I am Kabash. Hmm. And let me guess. Another Greek or Roman come to loot and plunder the resting place of my ancestors. Hmm? No, but yes. No, but yes, because I'm here for the Egyptian plaque. Hmm. To what end? I want to return it to the obelisk. Hmm. That is welcome news. You really are not Greek or Roman, are you? I was planning to return it myself, but for now, I must remain. Here, take it and restore the honor of Osiris. That was easy enough. Cheers. Now, as for the other plaque. Yeah, the fourth plaque. You know about that. Indeed, I have it right here. I stumbled across a collection of dusty curiosities while searching for a place to hide from the hungry children of Amit, and there it was. May I have it? You may not. In fact, I am about to destroy it. Why though? Because it speaks a treacherous, blasphemous lie. How? I will tell you, but first, do you know what this place is? I do. The Egyptian underworld. It has a name, and that is the Duat. See what has become of it. I have been down here for weeks, piecing together its story, and here is what I have learned. As Egypt declined and the Greeks had their turn to flourish, their souls came here in great numbers, but instead of adopting our ways, they copied and corrupted them. When they found the obelisk bearing the name Osiris, the true god of the underworld, they desecrated it, removing his name and replacing it with <sighs> Hades. Even the ferryman of the dead, known to my people long before as Kerti, they renamed to Keron. As if that desecration was not enough, they built over this place, using it as the foundation for their own underworld, so that ours was forgotten. Hmm, <laughs> my only solace is that the Greeks then suffered the same fate when the Romans rose to power, renaming Hades to Pluto, 
and this cycle began anew. So what's the problem with this plaque? It is inscribed with a script I do not recognize, but it is ancient, almost as if it is older than the plaque bearing Osiris's name. But if that is so, it would imply the gods of Egypt are mere imitations too, copied and corrupted from an ancient people who prospered even before us. Mate, that's and a that foolish way to look at things. Did to them what the Greeks and Romans did to us. <laughs> but this uh, I cannot accept. Uh, I sense a deception. Perhaps it is the work of Set the Usurper, seeking to undermine Osiris once more. Mate, just think about it, right? It doesn't matter what the gods are called, as long as you honour the gods, you know what I mean? Like, it doesn't matter if he's called fucking Sharon, Shabaya, Shavada Shanga, Shavada Shavaro, Shavada... It doesn't make a fucking difference, right? What does the inscription say? You will never know. This work of sacrilege must be destroyed, thrown into the black abyss below in Osiris's name. Please don't. You are too late. It is done. Now I'm going to have to go in after it. Awesome. You would plunge into the depths of the Duat with no way back up. Madness. Madness? This is Sparta! We'll see. First I've got some questions. If it will help you to see reason, then ask. I don't even care. This guy's got out. I don't care about any of this shit. What's down I there? Do not know. Blah, 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 blah. He wants me to go down there even more. Is everyone so contrary where you are from? There. Good. Wait. You are planning to go down there. I see it in your eyes. Definitely. You would plunge into the depths of the Duat with no way back up. Madness. Hmm. I'll find a way. We shall see. Mate. I am a fucking legend, you just don't even understand. I've already done it. Save it, say yeah. Got it. That was easy. Right now, let's just fucking leg it. But it looks like we're gonna have to go right. Oh, there's an invi invisible wall here. Looks like we're not going right. Ah, look. They're telling me where to go. Are they? Invisible wall again. The Duat. Do not. Jump into the depths of the Duat, you do not know what it lies down there. Oh fuck. When I told you that you would not find a way back up, that was not a prediction. That was a promise. You Why? will die here. Um There's no need for this to end in violence. Oh fuck this. Get out of my way or you'll be the one to die here. Do not be a fool. I have the higher ground. You're gonna break the golden rule. Good. I welcome it. You see, the philosopher told me that each time it breaks, Osiris bellows with rage, and his voice shakes the very foundations of the earth. I can only hope one more tremor will lay waste to this fragile place once and for all, and you along with it. The many shall suffer for the sins of the one. See ya. Uh, Fuck, I just got shot in the ass. Right, tell you what. I'm just gonna stay here. Because nobody can get me here. Wait till my health regens. Actually, save it. 
Yeah, let my health regen, then all we gotta do is make it to the, the portal and we've got the plaque. Fucking get in. And then that's... Where's Kabash? Fuck him. He'll die down there like the fool he is. Where the fuck am I? Oh, I'm back at the start. Come on, health. Regen faster. I can't see a fucking thing. Right, let me save it. Um. Right, so it's the... It's... He was here. I came in along this path. Yes. This is the way. This is the way. The Wimba way. Osiris would be displeased at these loading times. Kabash is a great A cocksucker, what was he playing at? Come on. What is this shit? I can't get jiggy with this shit. Fuck me. Let's save it so we don't have to go to that load screen again. Right, let's go. Leroy Jenkins. Wait there. Mate, give us that fucking plaque. Run, bitch, I'm stuck. I'm fucking stuck on something. Run, bitch, run! <laughs> so is that? So do I have three plaques now? I should have. And the last plaque is to get where Dooley is. Big Dooley. Let's check. Right. Inventory. Roman plaque. Egyptian plaque. Sumerian plaque. So yeah. The only one we've got to get is the one that Dooley's holding. Okay, well tell you what lads. I'm going to... Because it's such a fucking fart on, right? Getting that guy elected like it takes so long for this guy to run about and do his duties what I'm gonna do is I'll do that now and when you see me in like a couple of seconds time I'll have already done the election and will be at Dooley's cell ready for him to be removed so I'll, I'll do that right now see you in a second lads Right lads, so we're back. Um, I've just finished the election. It actually takes 15 minutes from you talking to Galerius and telling him to do all the jobs for him to do all the jobs and have the election finish. It's ridiculous. It's like, why the game doesn't let you quick skip that is ridiculous. Like having to do that every single time. Fortune smiles on you today, Julius. Right, well we get this thing out there. Oh, it's already open. <laughs> You're going to let me out of here. Give us that. Sorry it took He's so already opened the gate, right? So you fuck these guys. Right, well, we need to um, restart this cycle. Well, wait there. Oh, I've got all four. Good, I've got all four tabs. So we will restart the cycle because it's going to get restarted anyway because he's going to um, break the golden rule by stealing the first thing that he sees. Oh, fuck. 
Um, I need to kill someone quick. shall suffer for the sins of the one. Suffer. You will suffer. Wait, let's hope Sentinius, Sentius doesn't get stuck on something. Come on, bro. Oh, I think he's made it. He's made it. Right, we'll restart the cycle. We'll go and place them tablets and see what's in the, um, the temple above the, the city. It'll be interesting to see. As if you're trying to extend. Sentius, you muppet. I don't know if you've ever been told this, Sentius, but you're a cunt. <laughs> right then. Save it. I don't need you to do anything, mate. I'm busy. Okay. To the temple. <clears throat> do we even have any side quests left? Nah, that's it. That's all side quests done. Point of origin. Yeah, yeah. It is a Hercu Herculean task. We're gonna do this. We're gonna fight the gods. She'll fight them as a mere mortal. Let's not intervene in that. So where's this obelisk? Oh, that there. Ah, oh, I'm gonna get accosted by this wench. Ah, oh, yes, whatever. Watch this. See ya. All right. Well, it was lovely to meet you. Goodbye. I look forward to getting to know you better over the coming months. And if you ever... I can't believe this is how it ends. Oh no. No. No, 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 no. Wolf Pierce, what are you doing? Get back from there. If you lose your balance, you'll fall. That's the idea. There you go. Um, good luck, I'm out here. <laughs> See ya. I am out. See ya, Where mate. you are, Centilla, my love. I'm sorry. Wolf Pierce, no! That's what happens. Can I can I play the game now? Oh. Goodbye. Right now. Nice, it's unlocked. Gods are not happy. Hey, I think we might actually have a boss fight. I wonder if we're gonna fight um, Hades or Pluto with the golden bow. Osiris, Cyrus, Lord of Silence, grant me audience. Then again, no, cause it's one, maybe Nurgle's the one before that. Pluto? Oh, so it was the latest one. It was the latest god's name. Oh, I thought you had to go to the oldest one because that's his true name. This way. Why is it different? Let's go in reverse order. So we start with Pluto, but then it's Hades, 
Yeah, there we go. I figured it out. Gotta go and reverse. Oh, look, see. Ah, I've just realised the scenery changes. So this is Egyptian, so it is going in reverse order. Cyrus. And then Nurgle. Oh, we're in fucking Star Wars. Vader. Lord Vader. Oh, this is banging. What the hell? Maybe the gods aren't mythical legendary beings. They're just people with better technology. And here you are. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Hove. As you have already gathered, I've been known by many names. Nergal to the Sumerians, Osiris to the Egyptians, Hades to the Greeks, and Pluto to the Romans. But the one constant through it all has been my title, God of the Underworld. And I've been watching you with curiosity, mortal, ever since your arrival. You are unlike the others, aren't you? And what is more, you carry a weapon that was never intended for mortals to wield, and you do it so brazenly. But there will be time for your reckoning later. First, as a reward for undoing the desecration of my obelisk, I will allow you to satisfy your curiosity. Ask what you will. How much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? What's your story? My story is many thousands of years long. You will need to be more specific. What do you wish to know? You're a god. Who is the woman on your left? This is my beloved. Like me, she has been known by many names. Oh, hello. Kigal to the Sumerians. Isis to the Egyptians, Persephone to the Greeks, and Proserpina to the Romans. Or perhaps you might know her as the goddess of springtime, the cycle of life and renewal. Oh, it's her whispering. It is. Your gaze lingers too long. Okay. Why do you look and sound like a man? My kin and I all adopted this form long ago, so that we might better understand and communicate. In time, we grew fond of the sensory delights it affords. Desire, joy, ecstasy, even rage and sorrow, while an acquired taste can be addictive. I, I, I've got to ask another question, right? Why the fuck is the music so loud compared to the voices? Like, mate, get your fucking sound fucking levels correct. You're a god. It is a matter of perspective. God is a label I was given by you mortals, not one I gave myself. Your ancestors revered me because to them, my knowledge and technology made me incomprehensibly powerful, just as you might seem so to an insect. But despite all that, there are rules even I must obey. I want to see your true form. No. Long ago I swore to Persephone remain in this form for as long as we remained among your kind. I must honor that. Who's that on your right? That is my servant. You would have met by the river, though she wears many faces and goes by many names. Kumu Tabal to the Sumerians, Kurti to the Egyptians, Charon to the Greeks, and Charon to the Romans. Her role is to ferry souls between the mortal world and this one and to make their transition as seamless as possible. For that, she earned herself the infamous, if erroneous, moniker, the Ferryman. You will talk more later. For now, ask your questions. Something else. As you wish. What is this place? It has come to be known simply as the Underworld, and it exists because of a wager I made long ago. And what was this wager? That is a long story. One that began over 3,000 years ago and continues to this day. 
You see, long ago, my kin and I set out from our home on Elysium to search for other forms of life among the stars. We discovered your planet and witnessed your kind evolving from primates into something lawless and barbaric. You all but destroyed yourselves, your too short lives being extinguished by violence and ignorance and disease. Yet Proserpina saw raw potential in you, and persuaded the rest of us it would be squandered without our intervention and stewardship. So we revealed ourselves to your people in a place called Sumer. We offered guidance in agriculture, toolcraft, and law, and you called us gods. For a time, you flourished, but soon you were too many for us to oversee. And as you spread from that cradle of civilization, we saw something disturbing. We had sown the seeds of dependency and confusion, and soon you returned to your old ways of violence and ignorance, this time in our name. My kin had seen enough, and gave up on your kind, condemning you as barbaric and chaotic, scarcely more than animals. We began preparations to return to Elysium, our home world, a utopia unspoilt by conflict and unimaginable in its beauty. But my Proserpina could not bear to abandon your kind without guidance, and knowing it would force the rest of us to leave her behind, she made an extraordinary sacrifice. She gave up her immortality to descend permanently to the ranks of humankind. And so she began her inescapable trajectory toward death. Horrified, I acted swiftly. I placed her in suspended animation in a deep, frozen sleep to prevent age and sickness from claiming her. And then I pleaded with Proserpina's father, who the Romans called Jupiter, to bring her with us to Elysium. It was and is my hope that once there, we might one day learn to undo what she has done to herself. But he refused. I did everything I could to persuade him, but he would not relent. He would rigidly uphold his final pronouncement. Humans were unworthy of ascension to Elysium, and no exceptions would be made. But seeing that I was aggrieved, he proposed a wager, the terms of which were as follows. If even one human city could prove itself capable of living without sin for a single year, then Proserpina and all of humanity would be permitted to join us in Elysium. My part would be to remain behind, the last of my kind, to watch over you without interfering, and to sit in silent judgment. And so my reward has been to languish here, enduring a 3,000-year winter, waiting for the day your kind proves itself worthy of her faith in you, so that I might take her with me to Elysium and unthaw my goddess of springtime. And here I am, after all this time, still waiting. Hmm. So they couldn't survive a year without sinning. Who are your kin? There were also gods who, like me, have been known by many names. But perhaps you knew them by their Roman names. Our leader, Jupiter, as well as Neptune, Saturn, Juno, Minerva, Mars, Venus, Apollo, Diana, Vulcan, Vesta, Ceres, and of course, my beloved Persephone. Who built the city? As the first wave of your kind arrived from Sumer, I had them build a city in their own fashion, so that they might be comfortable and recreate their lives here. I had them build the entrance as a vertical shaft leading to baths, to cleanse them of the sins of their former lives, and to prevent escape. I watched wave after wave of Sumerians arrive, and as their civilization declined over the centuries, they were replaced by Egyptians. Of course, believing themselves to be the superior civilization, the Egyptians promptly built over what had been built before, and made all the same mistakes. After another thousand years, the Greeks began to arrive, and then the Romans, and they all did the same thing. They built upon the underworlds of their predecessors, renamed their gods, and ensured their foundations were forgotten. 
Yeah, and how did you decide who comes here? To ensure the wage was fair, it was important that my subjects were chosen at random. To this end, I had my servant distribute a thousand tokens fashioned from the silver, a rare element at the time, across all of Sumer. Whoever died while in possession of one of them would be located by my servant and ferried to this place, with no memory of how they arrived. As the tokens were discovered, they were traded, smelted, and fashioned into trinkets, and eventually coins, spreading to Egypt like seeds on the wind. Later, when they spread to Greece, they would come to be known as Charon's Oval, or as coins for the ferryman. Some placed coins in the mouths of their dead hoping they would awaken here, though they had no way of knowing which coins were fashioned from the original tokens. In fact, almost all of the tokens are accounted for, only two remain. And so after this wave destroys itself, as it is destined to do, your kind will have squandered the last of its potential to ascend beyond this rock, and Persephone's along with it. Hmm. And how do we learn about the underworld? It is a regrettable story. One of the first men who came to this place was a king of Sumer and a troublemaker. To be rid of him, I returned him to his people on the condition that my servant erased his memories of this place. But the erasure did not take completely, and he told stories of this place as if describing memories of a dream. His tales were committed to writing which came to be known as the Epic of Gilgamesh, and his words were twisted and distorted over generations. Later, the Egyptians would adapt Sumer's stories of the underworld, making them wildly intricate and labyrinthine. Their Book of the Dead and Book of Gates bore less and less resemblance to this place in their priests' pursuit of profit. Then, when the Greeks began to arrive, they proved far more cunning, and in a series of incidents that will not be repeated, five of them escaped. A warrior named Heracles, two kings named Sisyphus and Theseus, a poet named Orpheus, and a Trojan named Aeneas. They each told embellished tales of this place, how to get here, and how to escape. And so from Sumer to Egypt, Greece to Rome, your kind has always told each other stories about this place, though each story contained only a seed of truth. Hmm. Okay, what of next? Course. Are you responsible for the Golden Rule? That is merely the name your people have given to it, but yes, it is my doing. Why gold? That is a story dating back to the very first wave. After the Sumerians finished building their city, the self-declared ruler threw a banquet to celebrate. Now this man was unmarried, and many women were vying to become his wife, a prestigious position of power and influence in a new world. Of all the women, two were particularly ambitious. Both were beautiful, and both arrived at the banquet wearing eye-catching dresses and painted faces, their hair woven in elaborate fashion. The first woman, recognizing that she would require an advantage to win the ruler's affection, draped herself in jewelry, ornate necklaces, bracelets and rings fashioned from gold. Seeing this ostentatious display, the second woman grew envious, for she had no such jewelry at her disposal. She prayed aloud to any gods that would listen to cover her in gold, and when her prayer went unanswered, she took matters into her own hands. While the others indulged at the banquet, the second woman summoned the first for a discussion in a quiet place. She checked that nobody was watching and pushed her rival from the top of the ziggurat where she broke her neck on the rocks below. But I was watching, and I decided to answer her prayer. I took the golden bow left behind by Diana, and I shot that woman in the heart covering her from head to toe in a layer of molten gold. That's nice. And I left her to stand there, that she might serve as a grim reminder of what befalls those who sin in my domain. But that was not enough. 
for the entire city was tainted by her sin, and the wager could no longer be won. So I had no choice but to wipe the slate clean. I gilded them all to make way for a new wave, and began the wager again. And to this day, each of them, and all who came after, line the halls of this city in animate but conscious. Suspended in time with only their sight and hearing preserved, so they may bear witness to and lament the folly of your kind for eternity as silent golden sentinels. That's brutal. You're responsible for destroying all the lives. I give your kind a second chance at life, as well as ample warning about my law. And when you disobey, and you always disobey, you force my hand bringing terrible suffering upon yourselves. And so you ask if I am the one destroying your lives. And I say, no, you destroy yourselves. I am merely the means by which you do it. Where did these golden bowls come from? When my kin departed, they left behind many relics which I inherited. A consolation prize of sorts. The golden bow originally belonged to one of my kin who the Romans called Diana. As my collection of golden statues grew, I chose the most ferocious among them and equipped them each with a duplicate of her bow and tasked them with hunting down the forsaken at my behest. They became known simply as Furies. What do you consider a sin? I've always considered that the cornerstone of morality is the ability to determine right from wrong on one's own. No attempt to lay out rules like your Code of Hammurabi or your Twelve Tables of the Roman Republic can ever cover all possible scenarios. This should come as no surprise to you, since the core principle has been expressed in many forms by many of your civilizations. The Egyptians made a rudimentary attempt with do to the doer to make him do. The Greeks refined it with avoid doing what you would blame others for doing. The Roman Stoics added, treat your inferior as you would wish your superior to treat you. Even the so-called cultists hiding among you often say, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. It is the simplest of concepts, and each one of you is born with the faculties required to apply it to any situation. Yet none of the peoples who expressed this rule were able to uphold it. Curious, is it not? Hmm. It doesn't seem like you've been upholding it either. Enough. You clearly know nothing. How do you know when people sin? I'm able to commune with all of the statues in the city. Their ears are my ears, and their eyes are my eyes. Is Prosima connected to the statues in the same way? If she was still conscious, I suppose she could, but she's not. Why do you ask? No reason. Then what an odd question. I've seen some terrible things here that you didn't consider a sin. How would you let them happen? Do you plan to speak in sweeping generalizations? Or are you going to give me an example? Suicide. Ah yes, the dead bondsman. Taking one's own life is a self-directed act. It is not one that is done to others, however they may be affected by it. Therefore, it cannot be said that one who commits suicide has done anything unto others. Fair enough. Now tell me, what other sins do you believe I have overlooked? Price gouging for life-saving medication. The medicine. Merchant. How is that inconsistent with the rule I have outlined? He wouldn't want someone else to demand an outrageous price for the medicine he needed if he was dying. I disagree. Having watched this merchant, that is precisely what he would expect from others, and he would be quite capable of paying the price anyway. You can't know what he would expect, you're just speculating. Applying this rule always requires speculation to some degree. It requires us to ask what another person would want if they found themselves in another situation. 
Doesn't that make it inherently subjective and unreliable? Not if we're wise enough to know the mind of man. And do you think you know the minds of other people? Hmm. Supposing you're right, and my law has been broken, and I should turn you all to gold immediately. Is that what you want? I'm right and you know it. Then your desire to be right outweighs your desire to survive. You will make a fine statue. Hmm. Enough talk. I'm going to end this. Draw the wooden bow. Ooh, draw the wooden bow. Or draw the golden bow. Well, I thought firing the golden bow at him. Oh, what do you think? Draw the wooden bow. I want to draw the wooden bow. I know it seems counterintuitive, but fuck it. <laughs> do you really think you can wound me, a god, with that primitive weapon? Break my chamber, seize my crown. Let's find out, shall we? Pathetic. The many shall suffer for the sins of the one. Oosh. Got the crown. Right, run. Oh shit, there's loads of them. Oh, I've got a crown. Fucking get in. Shit, am I gonna make this? Oh mate, I shamoned that guy's arrow. <laughs> Shamona. Fuck oh shit. Oh my days, oh my days, oh my days. Oh god, this is a this is a good way back to the AM. Um, There's one guy on here. I'm sure there's one golden bowman here. Right, I've got plenty of health. I'll make this. There him. Run, 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 run. What? Oh. Fuck that. What a legend. Got the crown, but what does that mean? Rewind time and show Pluto you have Proserpina's crown. Okay, what we'll do is We'll call it an episode here. We've got the crown. Let's save it. Um, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to tell this guy down there to do everything for us, right? Save everyone. And then I'm going to go back into the temple with the crown and see where that leads us. Okay, lads, but well, I'll see you in the next episode for what might be the finale. See you there, lads.